An elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. So Master Toute Saint-Jacques will pass now. Now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Ten professional chefs have faced their first challenge to prove to Monica Galletti that they can cook at the highest level. Now, they've been split into two groups. Today, five of them will face the final test to decide who is good enough to cook for Michel Roux Jr. At the end of it, one of them will be going home. I think the pressure today is going to be quite intense, but I like pressure. I think it will be a life-changing experience. A silly schoolboy mistake could be the end of it. It could be going home time. It's kind of on a knife edge, really. I just want to go out there with all guns blazing. Each and every one of us has really got something to prove today, otherwise it's going to be bye-bye. <laughs> What's the skills test today? They need to prepare this monkfish, remove all the skin, and then take it off the bone and cook us a piece to try. First thing I'm going to do is remove the skin from the monkfish. The monkfish has several layers of skin, and you want that all off, because when you cook this and you leave that on, it make it quite tough. That's not easy to spot, is it? No. Some of them might leave the sinew on, but I don't want to see that here today. Next, I'm going to remove the fillets. What you do is you're going to glide against the bone of the fish, and that's just going to open up very easily and take it off. Wow. Trim it down. And that, Greg, is ready to be cooked. We're not going to ask them to cook a whole fillet like that, because it's going to take a while. It will take a while. They're going to cook the whole fillet. They might run out of time. I would suggest they cut it down in half or into smaller pieces. Into the pan they go. Give it a nice golden colour all over. Now we'll put a knob of butter into that and into the oven it goes. Cooking it in the oven is more gentle than on a fierce heat. I'm going to make a lemon and caper butter to go on the monkfish. In with my shallots. They've got 15 minutes for this, yeah? All right, that's doable. Well doable. It is doable, yeah. And some capers, some butter. Mm. In with the lemon. And just finish with the parsley. Mm. Now I'm going to cut the fish and serve. There we have it, Greg, perfectly filleted and cooked monkfish. Right, do you want to see the first chef? Bring it on. First up is Claire, who worked in a Michelin star restaurant while studying. In the first round, her prawns and mango puree underwhelmed. To win would just be amazing for my career, personally, to show that I can achieve something, to do bigger and better things. Claire, this is a skills test. There's a monkfish. We'd like you to remove two fillets and then cook one, however you want. And you've got 15 minutes. Prove to me why you're good enough to go through and cook for me, Cher. Monica said last time that she wanted to see some more skill from me. So I need to prove to her that, and show her that I can do that. You've had five minutes, you've got ten minutes left. Is your pan hot enough? You're halfway. 
Seven and a half minutes left. You've got three minutes. You've got 60 seconds. I'm not going to put that bit on the plate because it's a bit under. Sure. OK. All done? Yes. Claire, so you haven't taken the rest of the layers of the skin off here. All this needs to come off, OK? Yeah. Um, reason being is because once you put that fish into a very hot pan, you saw straight away it yeah. pulls in and it gets quite tough. To some people, it might not seem a lot, but for us and the standards that we look for, it is not acceptable. The lovely cooking, still moist, the seasoning is wonderful. You saw this bigger piece of fish was not cooked, and so you refused to serve it. It's the right thing to do. The only thing that lets it down is too much lemon juice. It's very, very sharp at the end but otherwise not a bad job. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> not perfect, but not bad under the circumstances. Claire, thank you very much. Thank Off you. you go. Thank you. She's got promise. I knew I should have taken the sinew off. It's all things that I know, it's just because of the pressure in there, it just gets to you. Head chef Ben has been working in kitchens for over 12 years. He impressed with his palate, even though his prawn bisque and salsa combination didn't work. I didn't expect the competition to be easy. I certainly don't expect it to get any easier. It's going to get harder each and every time. 15 minutes then, Ben. Off you go. The pressure's really tough. As soon as you walk into that room, you forget everything. You forget where you are and who you are and what you're doing. It's just a case of trying to block everything else out and, and focus. You've got five minutes left. Three minutes left. 30 seconds. Time's up, Ben. What you were trying to do, then, was rip all this off with your hands, as you do with a sole. Monkfish has so many layers of skin, it's not going to just tear off. You actually need to physically cut it off with a knife. You struggled so long with that, it was actually quite painful to watch. You can see that's clearly undercooked. I'm going to try it anyway. Ben, it's a shame that your fish is undercooked because your caper butter sauce is wonderful. At this level, you should not be making these silly mistakes. Bits of that fish are still see-through and I would send it back, Ben, I would. There were some mistakes here. I'm sure you've had better days, Ben, but your sauce is lovely. Thank you, Ben. Off you go, Chef. Very disappointed. I didn't handle things very well. Uh, a lot of things went wrong. Yeah, not happy.
27-year-old Swami moved to the UK three years ago. In the last round, his prawn and salsa dish was well received, despite serving it with a boiled egg. Through cooking, I believe this is one of the best areas where I can express myself and go wild. All right, chef, 15 minutes. Show us what you got. Last round, I went overboard and I was too enthusiastic. But this time, I want to hold myself back. Halfway. Five minutes left. Last 60 seconds. Time's up. Swami, you've left all the sinew on this side. We don't want to see any of this dark bit of sinew on the fish. Hmm. That fish is cooked nicely. Bit of a tang in there. I like the butteriness of it. But you've left the skin on the bottom of the fish, which is making it slightly chewy. The fish is cooked. Well, with the layer of the sinew we've left on there, it gives it a slightly chewy texture, which monkfish should not have. It's a lovely fish, monkfish, and it should not be like that when it's prepared properly. The shallots, though with the capers, could have been something very nice. However, so some of those shallots, quite a few of them are burnt, which just ruins this. I believe uh, cooking in Master Chef is more tough than cooking in three Michelin star kitchen. It's so much pressure and you've got to perform at that level. Cooking teacher Chris was a head chef by 24. He stood out in the first test with his prawn and chili lime pancakes. I think I'm very confident in the skills. I do believe that I'm a good all-round chef. 15 minutes, skills test, off you go. I'm determined like you wouldn't believe. I really, really want to get through to Cooks with Michelle. Halfway. You've got five minutes left. Chris, three minutes left, please. One minute left. You're going to have to get that up on the plate. You've got 10 seconds left. That's it. Stop. You're out of time. You're out of time. Put that on. Put the sauce on now so we can taste it, but you ran out of time. You had timing issues. You spent so long removing the sinew off the fillets. However, you did manage to take the sinew off the first for today, and thank you for that. Greg let you put the sauce on at the end. You could have still put it on nicely, instead of looking like a pool of butter. There's far too much butter, and you put too much salt on. It's not a particularly elegant, plate of food. It's not. If that was served to me, I'd be a little disappointed. The caper butter with the parsley and the lime through that is wonderful, but the fish is far too salty. Chris, thank you. Thank you very much. He 
got the skin off. Mm. I completely mistimed the whole thing, panicked, and the result was not very good. John works as a head chef for the NHS. But he had a disaster in the invention test when he served raw dumplings. I'm feeling quite positive today. Uh, I had a bad first round, I've got a lot to prove. Uh, I'm looking forward to showing what I'm really about. John, this is your opportunity to stand out. Show us what you can do. I'm quite confident in my skills. The skills test does frighten me, though. There are some things that I haven't done for quite some time, but if they put in front of me, I'll deal with them. Got 10 minutes left. Five minutes, you got. Sixty seconds left. Twenty seconds, you're going to have to get it on a plate. All right, time. Put it on. That's it, time's up. Stop. You started off okay watching you prepare the monkfish. However, what you did not do is remove all of this um, sinew. Throughout the cooking, you let the fish cook in such a dry, hot pan, the butter burns. It was cooking away dry as an autumn's leaf. And looking at your plate, I mean, this does not look appealing at all. John, the fish is ever so slightly under. OK, in some parts it's actually a little bit chewy where it's not actually touched the pan. It's a disappointing effort, really. Well, it's not what I expected to be served up to me, John. I don't know who's more disappointed with me or you. We've got all of this, which is really quite rubbery and inedible, like a piece of plastic. This isn't right, John. I know it, you know it. My friend Monica most certainly knows it. I reckon you've had better days. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Disappointing in myself again. Thanks, John. Off you go. Thank you. At this point in time, I'm feeling lower than low. It's heartbreaking. There's no one else to blame other than myself, but I'm just so disappointed with myself. It's unreal. We saw five chefs perform a skill test on a monkfish with varying degrees of success. Some here I thought, well done. Others I thought, oh, you worry me a little bit. One of the five managed to take all the sinew off the fish. Disappointing. I really like Claire. She worked calmly, she worked cleanly, her fish was perfectly edible and she made a nice sauce. Silly error still leaving that skin on. I'm going to put her through to Michelle, but she needs to do some knockout plates in the next round. Swami did get colour on the fish, he did manage to cook it all the way through, he gave us something we could eat. The fish was nicely cooked. I think he should go through. Chris prepared the fish properly, the only one to prepare the fish and remove all the skin and sinew. He deserves a place in the next round. Now that he goes through to cook for Michelle, he needs to up his game and be on time. So Chris has gone through, Claire's gone through, Swami's gone through. This means a decision between Ben and John. John's plate, he had the whole fillet on there, which was undercooked. And of course, the fish was very chewy with the amount of sinew that was underneath. And it just looked like a piece of fish on a plate of butter. This moment in time, I'm hoping that they can see something in me and realise that that's not me and it is down to nerves and hopefully they'll give me another chance. Ben was very, very nervous, didn't do a bad job preparing the fish, but he severely undercooked it. I couldn't have eaten it. I'd had to send it back. 
I'm really desperate to move on to the next round, if nothing else, just to prove that that's not me. I know I can cook better than that. Who's just had a bad day and who really isn't up to it? Ben or John? I know who I'm going to take a chance on and I know who's going home. There's five of you now, only four of you can go through. The chef that is leaving us is... John. I'm absolutely gutted right now. Gutted and disappointed at myself that how I performed and I know it's not me. It's horrendous, but I deserve to go. It's fair enough. You now get to go through and cook for my boss. Do me proud, do yourselves proud. There are classics that should be part of every professional chef's repertoire. And Michel Roux Jr. is looking for chefs who aspire to cook them at his two Michelin star level. The recipe I want the chefs to cook today is a tarte aux pralines roses and poire au caramel. That is a traditional Lyonnaise dessert made with pink pralines and with caramelized pears. This complex classic consists of sweet pastry filled with pink praline caramel, garnished with caramelized pears and pear crisps. It will allow Michel to scrutinize the chef's ability to make exquisite desserts and present them to a level of artistic excellence. At the age of 18, I was working in Lyon at a restaurant called Alain Chapelle. This particular dessert was always on the menu and it was one of the best sellers. First job is to make the sweet paste. Sifted flour, the butter in the middle, along with the sugar. And working with the fingertips until there are no more lumps in the butter. And then the egg yolk. And then you gradually bring in the flour. I expect the chefs to know how to make a sweet pastry. Wrap it up in cling film to set and put it in the fridge to rest. And here we have the pralines, the sugared almonds. We need to crush them. Now we add the cream. And we're going to cook it to 104 degrees. Any more than 104 degrees, it's going to be chewy and hard. Any less, and it just won't set. Taking the pastry out of the fridge, it's now set. Pastry should be no more than two millimeters thick. Oh, it's gone up to 103. 104. Off the heat. It is vital, it has to be 104 degrees. Not more and not one degree less. Move that a bit. There we go. Quickly back onto my pastry. The chefs know that we only need one portion, but you should always do one extra, just in case of an accident. So I'm lining the little tartlets, and it has to be lined perfectly. This goes into the oven at 180 degrees. And now we need to cook off the garnish, which is the quarters of pear. I still want the pears to have a little crunch to them as well. I want them to have a little edge. It's just beautiful. The smell, the aromas are wonderful. We can switch off now and leave them to cool down gently. 
These have been in the oven about 20 minutes. Now we fill them with this lovely pink caramel. Now into the blast chiller to chill them down so that they can set. The tartlets need about 10 minutes to bring that temperature down and to set the caramel. And we're ready to plate up. Want just a little bit of this caramel flavored butter on each pair. And finally, little pear crisps. Tarte aux pralines roses and poire au caramel. Pink praline tart with caramelized pears. This is a really difficult one. They have got their work cut out. Cooking for Michelle is going to be at the pinnacle of my career so far. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm determined to get everything right. I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm so happy and I'm so privileged that I got this opportunity to cook for uh, Chef Michelle. The pressure cooking for Monica today was immense. It's one thing cooking for his sous chef, but it's another thing cooking for the man himself. Now is the time for you to deliver. Now, right now. For your first test, I want you to cook one of my classic desserts. Tarte aux pralines roses et poire au caramel. All I want to see is a beautiful dessert Cooked to perfection, delivered on time. You have two classic tests today, two. And at the end of those tests, one of you will be going home. You have got an hour and 10 minutes. Off you go. They may not have worked in pastry, but they should at least understand and be able to follow a recipe. In the last round, everything fell to pieces. I collapsed. The dish collapsed. A lot of silly mistakes were made. I'm determined that that's not going to happen again. Right, Ben, how important do you think the classics are? Extremely. I think, um... If you don't have at least some knowledge of the classics, I, I feel everything else is based upon them. So I don't, I don't think you can look to move forward in your career in, until you've learned the building blocks. Are you trained in the classics? Um, I think I'm a way off fully trained, but yeah, I think to an extent I am. And what about pastry and desserts? Basics only. This would be a, a good challenge for me, something I certainly haven't done for a, a long time. When was the last time you worked with pastry? Yeah. The last time I made sweet pastry was comfortably three years ago. Hoping I can remember everything I've learned and pull it off. Fingers crossed. Ben said he hadn't worked in pastry for three years or more. It looks as if he's rolled it out too thick. Ten minutes. You've got an hour left. Getting through Monica was tough. I need to work real hard to go through. Swami obviously didn't read the recipe properly. He put the pralines into the cream and started to boil them. He then realized that he had to crush them. His lack of understanding of pastry work, I'm afraid it shows. Swami, tell me, have you been classically trained? Not, no chef. No classical training at all? No classical training, as far as the French cuisine is concerned. So where have you trained? I trained in India, in Indian cuisine. No French influence here? I know the very, very, very basic things, the techniques, as far as the pastry is concerned. 
I'm a beginner, an absolute beginner. An absolute beginner? I'm, I'm absolutely worried that I'll be able to do the justice with dish or not. How tough is this for you? I think it's one of the toughest days of my life, I tell, tell far. You're halfway. I really do believe that I can cook Michelin star food. I love everything about it. I understand everything about it. I do hope that I can prove this to Michelle and do myself justice. Right, Chris, do you understand what we're looking for in this particular dessert? Obviously, attention to detail. Pastry's got to be perfect, thin, and there's no room for error, so I'm hoping that I've got everything correct. Mm, good. So, quietly confident? Quietly confident, yes. And classically trained? I've been classically trained to a point. My old mentor was from, uh, from your father's uh, realm, and uh, he's passed on some great dishes to me. Mm. You're working a lot faster on this tart than you did with your monkfish. I couldn't get any slower than that monkfish. That's the slowest thing I've ever done in my life, so, yeah, it was only... It had to speed up and improve. Chris seems to be doing really well. My only worry is he's now attempting a lot. We've got egg whites going on, we've got sugar going on. I just hope he doesn't attempt too much, because he seems to be going well. There's definitely added pressure cooking for Michelle Wu. I just need to keep my head and just cook to the best of my ability. Right, Claire, have you worked with pastry and desserts before? I've worked with pastry at college, um, but I've never worked on a pastry section, unfortunately. You seem to be working your way around this recipe with ease. I think I can make a sweet paste and blind bake it. So I'm fairly confident as long as I just hold my nerves. I've never used pralines before, which is exciting. They taste really nice. How long have you been out of college? <laughs> I finished last Monday. You finished college? Yeah. On... <laughs> my last exam, so it's such a relief. Now I can concentrate on this. But you've been doing practical experience a lot along the way? or I've worked in kitchens always part-time along the way. Ideally, I'd like to go and work at some of the top 50 restaurants. That's my aim, to get some experience in them and travel a bit around the world in different kitchens and just as much experience as I can, basically. Claire is only 22. It'll be interesting to see if she can handle this pressure. She seems to be working OK. Is that confidence or is that the arrogance of youth? Last three minutes. You've got one minute to put the final things on your plate. 30 seconds, last touch. Time's up, your time is up. We asked you to cook one of my classic desserts, tarte aux pralines et poire au caramel. The praline must be cooked to 104 degrees to achieve that lovely shine and a perfect texture. The pastry must be fine and well cooked. The pears cooked in a butter caramel and beautiful in colour. You were given ample time, so I was expecting some decoration, a little bit of flair and imagination. Swami, you first. Swami, for a chef who hasn't worked in pastry and who hasn't got classical training, I think you've done a very good job here. I can tell from the shine on the praline here that it's been cooked properly, but I was expecting some pear crisps uh, because that gives texture as well. Beautiful pears, they're cooked, and they've still got a bit of a bite to them, which works beautifully with a very well-cooked praline tart. 
The pastry itself is a little bit too thick. Swami, it's not as precise as I would have liked, but nonetheless a very good job. It tastes fantastic. It could have looked better. However, that's lovely. You clever old stick. I think I've done a, a tremendous job. I never imagined that I will do a good pastry for Michelle and, you know, it was, I, I surprised myself. Claire, it looks as if the filling hasn't been cooked, hasn't got that same sheen that it should have, the richness of dark red. I saw you making some lemon peel confit. Unfortunately, it didn't get on the plate. I tried it and it just, it tasted a bit better. I just didn't think it would work, so I left it. Fine. If it's not good, you don't put it on the plate. That's fine. The pears are lovely. Lovely, buttery, sweet, and the crisps are nice and crispy. Your pastry is lined very thinly, which is nice. Unfortunately, the filling is not cooked to 104 degrees. It has completely collapsed. You panicked. It shows. Your presentation is simple elegance, and, and I love it until you cut into a tart and then it just oozes its innards all over the plate. I think you've got a good eye. One eye on presentation, keep the other eye on the thermometer. Just so badly wanted to do well and then to leave the room again disappointed with the dish that I've produced is just like heartbreaking. Chris, your turn. Chris, you attempted a sugar cage there. There was lots of different caramels going on, and, and I thought, wow, we're going to get an absolute treat. Um, and we end up with a plate which, which looks messy. The pastry is paper thin. It's too thin. Obviously, it hasn't held. Your praline filling, I think, is cooked just about to 104 degrees. It is shiny. It's holding just. The caramel on the plate has set. You can't eat it. To be honest, Chris, and I don't really need to tell you this, it's no way near the level that we're looking for. The inside almost worked, but it's leaking out all over the place and you've got far too much sugar on that plate. I'm sure you're more disappointed than I am. Devastated. The dish that I put in front of Michelle was an absolute embarrassment to everything that I know and I can do. Ben, now for you. Lovely shiny filling there, and it's really got a lovely gloss to it. Some splashes of uh, extra filling there all over the plate. Um, not my cup of tea, but it's a modern style presentation. I think it works. The filling certainly looks and tastes as if it's been cooked to 104 degrees. It's not sticky. That's, that's very good. The lining of the pastry, very thin, cooked all the way through, but not too thin, so it's holding together. Very good attempt there, very good. What I don't like are your pear crisps. They look as if they've been dipped in caramel. You can't taste the pear. Nice tart, nice crumbly pastry, really nice and sweet inside, and you've still got some crunch from those praline as well, which is a really nice texture. Your crisps are sugar lumps, but overall, I'm smiling, I'd eat it all. I think you've done a decent job there, Ben. I think I kept my head better uh, this time. Uh, dealt with the pressure better. Still not 100% happy, still making silly mistakes, but I'm getting some things right, at least, oh, yeah, better. Two 
two classic tests, we said. That was the first one. Now, time for the second one, before we decide who's going home. Now it's your turn to cook your own classic dish. Playing to your strengths, a dish that you should know, a dish that will show off your skills. You've got an hour. Off you go. I'm confident that I can make this dish perfect. It's a classic of mine. It is a favourite. And I'm positive that Michelle will love it also. Chris, what classic recipe are you cooking? Pan-fried venison saddle with uh, fondant potato and kohlrabi, broad bean puree and a cassis sauce. What does this dish mean to you, Chris? It's very special. Um, it's been a signature dish of mine for a long time now. I'm cooking it for my late sister-in-law who died recently mm -hmm. and it was her favourite dish. So right. it's in her honour. I like the fact that it's a special dish and that it actually means something it to means you. It means a lot, yeah. It means a lot. Good. Do you feel you might have a bit to show here? Yeah? I'm totally devastated with the performance in the last two heats and I've got everything to show and it just means so much so. What do you now hope to achieve? Perfection. Absolute perfection on simple things and if I don't get that right, game over. After the disappointment of his tart, Chris is really going for it. But he has given himself a whack of stuff to do. There's no room for error here. He has to get it right. 15 minutes gone. Swami, what classic dish are you cooking for us? I'm uh, cooking a stuffed sea bass with fennel, fennel stew and confit fennel muffin with orange butter. Stuffed sea bass, this recipe seems familiar. It's your recipe, I believe. Why choose one of my recipes? If I can pull this off, I think uh, I'll be more than happy. It has to be absolutely perfect. Swami, brought up in India, trained in India, why haven't we got some classic beautiful food from India here? I can do that, but uh, that takes a very long time. If I'll do that in one hour, definitely I will not do justice to those dishes. So I thought I will do something which I can do within one hour. You said you didn't have classic training. So where have you come across this sea bass dish? I never trained, but I, I still try on my own. In my spare time, I, I love to cook whatever I can find of. And definitely, if I can do justice with this dish, I believe I, I'll be, I will be damn happy. Are you confident about this? Yes, absolutely, I'm confident. Michelle knows this dish in and out, and I need to be spot on. Swami has dug out a roux classic, the stuffed sea bass with fennel. The skill is in the filleting of that fish. You're halfway. Claire, what classic dish are you cooking for us? Um, today I'm cooking pea tortelloni with crispy chicken skin and morels. Mm. So, a pasta dish? Yes. Do you love Italian cooking? I enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy a lot of different cuisines, mixing and, mixing and matching with things, but yeah, I enjoy making pasta. Is there any specific reason why you chose this recipe? I just really love the flavours and I'm using classical techniques and, and it's me, really, so that's what I wanted to uh, show you. It seems like there's a lot to do there in, in one hour. I have practised it and I can do it in the time, so I just need to keep going. Like, in the last round, I didn't keep going. That's maybe where I went wrong. The last round didn't go exactly as you wanted it to? No. So how important is this now? This means everything to me now. I mean, it's my dish, I've created it, I've practised it. If you don't like this, then I may as well go home. <laughs> I think I can get this dish right because I have designed it. I'm pretty confident with the dish. Claire is not cooking a classic dish as such, but showing off classic techniques. If she gets all the skills right, this is a dish that could work. You've got 15 minutes.
perfect is the only way for Michelle. I really need to pay attention to dealing with the pressure properly, dealing with the nerves properly, and just cooking. The only thing that can go wrong in there and doing that dish is, is me. How did you cut yourself? Uh, believe it or not, on the veg peeler, chef. Oh, I'm afraid you've taken the top of your finger off. You've got to go and see someone in a hospital to fix that finger. It's a bad cut. I don't want to go out like this. I can't, I can't go out with a cut finger. I can't. <laughs> I can't let you carry on like this. I'm afraid we just can't. We can't. <sighs> yeah? No, I don't. Come on, let's go and get your finger sorted. Come on. I really feel for Ben because I know in his position I'd want to soldier on, but there's no way you can carry on like that. But it's a very serious bad cut. I'm just good, I can't go in and finish. I feel like I could finish cooking. And... Last two minutes, please. Last two. You've got one minute. Swami, how long is that going to take to cook? It'll take uh, another two minutes. You've got about 30 seconds. Carry on cooking it. That's it. Time's up. Time's up. Swami, carry on cooking. We'll just note how late you are, all right? I'm finished. Before we taste your food, as you know, Ben has cut himself. He's in the hospital. He won't be coming back. We still have to make a decision on who leaves the competition. That decision will now be between you three. Swami has made the roux classic dish of sea bass stuffed with fennel, served with fennel stew, fennel muffins, and orange butter. I know this dish inside out. You've chosen a classic that basically is a roux classic. So very brave. You were four minutes late. The sea bass, you saw it was undercooked. You then proceeded to pan fry the fish, which is not as it should be. It should come out of the oven, in the bag, and then served directly to the customer. The way we present it is we remove the skin. This just looks brown, brown and oily. You prepared your fish beautifully. There's not a bone in there, it is cooked and well seasoned. I like your fennel as well, got good taste. But normally I serve fennel, but with tomatoes, dried tomatoes, and that gives it an extra acidity, an extra edge, and a bit of color. For me, the muffin does not work there at all. The orange butter, no, doesn't work. It's too rich, too oily, too heavy. Obviously, this is not how it should be. That fish is lovely and soft, and I love the aniseed that you got from the stuffing. I like the aniseed as well that you have in your fennel. I draw the line at another fennel ingredient, a, a fennel muffin with fennel seed in it. It's like someone's taken the lovely, lovely, beautiful sea bash, cooked it properly, and then beaten it up with a licorice stick. I did a few things wrong. I haven't done the justice to the dish. I'm not happy at all. Claire has cooked pea tortellini, served with confit chicken wings, crispy chicken skin, morels, and sorrel leaves in a chicken reduction. The colors are brown and green. Not easy to make something look vivacious and appetizing, but I think you've just about achieved it. I think it's got a certain amount of finesse. Morel and chicken work. Lovely combination. Textures work because you've got the crispy chicken wing and the crispy skin. 
along with soft pasta, soft mushrooms. The chicken wings are really nice. Bags of flavor in there. The tortellini themselves, the pasta, I think is ever so slightly overcooked. It's nice and thin though, that shows a lot of skill. But the pea stuffing itself is very dry and bland. It, it, it's almost just like mushy pea. Works for me. The crispiness and the saltiness of the skin on that really moist chicken and the sweetness coming through from the pea is close to my idea of very good indeed. That dish I would finish quite happily, quite happily. But to elevate that to something truly memorable, you've got to pack some more flavour into there. Again, there was some tiny faults, but it wasn't far off a really good dish, so I'm happy. Chris's classic dish is pan-seared venison loin, kohlrabi and potato fondant, crispy parsnips, broad bean puree, asparagus, baby carrots, wilted spinach, and a cassis sauce. My first reaction is, this is huge. It's a massive, massive portion. You've cooked and roasted the meat well. It's well rested. Spinach I really like a lot. But for me, I think it ends there. It's far too big. The pomme fondants lacking a bit of seasoning. And the potato is only just cooked. That middle bit there is a little bit al dente and they've burnt a bit on the outside. Your sauce is sweet, a little bland. For me, I don't think it has achieved that level that I'm looking for. I like it all individually, but there's a lot to take in all together. You get a mouthful of venison, parsnip crisps, broad bean puree, cassis sauce, it's too much. Personally, I've got no issue with the taste of anything, but there is far too much going on and it's massive. Yeah. I've just overcomplicated things. I should have kept it a lot more simpler or change the dish, but that's it. Before we kick off this judging, Michelle, my heart goes out to, to Ben. It's horrible. He sliced the top of his finger off. There's no way we could have kept him in here. But I really, really feel for him. We've got Chris, we've got Claire, we've got Swami. One of them has to leave the competition. Chris is bold, he's imaginative, he's daring, he does push himself. I could find little wrong with the taste of Chris's food. I don't quite understand why he had so many different things on a plate and he served up far too much food. Chris is a solid chef, uh, that's for sure. He does have the basic skills and the understanding. I had issue with the size, obviously, but also with the taste. The sauce I thought was bland and it was far too sweet. The pomme fondant, slightly undercooked and a bit burnt around the edges. In the first round with his praline tart, he attempted too much. For me, that was replicated in the second round. I'd like to get through so much. Uh, I've, I've just not been the chef that I am. Claire was in tears over her tart, but I thought her decoration was good. Her pastry was very, very good. I thought Claire's tart looked really nice. However, once you cut into it, that's where we saw the glaring mistake. The filling had not been cooked to 104 degrees and was just liquid. Her classic dish of pea tortellini, I thought, worked really well. A couple of errors, grainy pea filling, possibly a little bit bland, but that dish is not far off being a really top quality dish. Oh, it'd be amazing to go through. I don't want to be going home today. I really don't. I've just got to cook one of my own dishes and I want to cook more of my own. I'm really impressed by Swami's tart. His pastry work was fantastic. By far the best one. Swami was very brave attempting one particular dish that I know inside out. 
I didn't like that orange butter on top. It was very rich and I don't think it worked with the fish. His garnish of fennel muffins I thought was just one step too far, but the fish was cooked to perfection. Not how it should have been, but cooked to perfection. An intriguing cook, Swami, really is, and definitely got some skills. But let's not forget Swami was four minutes late. He got the fish out of the oven when I called time. It wasn't cooked. He finished it in a pan. That took him four minutes over. I want to cook more and more for Michelle and Greg. I just want to hope that I'll get that opportunity. We have to make a decision. I think I know who should go through and who should leave now. We have made a decision. And the chef leaving us is... Chris. I'm gutted, obviously. Just wasn't my day today. I cracked under the pressure, made massive mistakes. There's no room for error in this competition, and um, so there we go. You're through to a quarter-final. I'm over the moon. I'm so happy, I can't tell you. I'm damn happy about it. I feel great, actually. I can't believe I'm through to the uh, quarterfinals. I'd love to go all the way now. It's such, it's a great feeling. Swami and Claire will join three other heat winners in a quarterfinal. First, they'll battle to impress Michelle and Greg with a dish of their own invention. This is pressure. This is where it gets really tough. They've got to cook for their MasterChef lives. If they can't impress us today, they are not ready for what comes next. Only the best will go on to serve their food to some of the UK's toughest food critics. You couldn't serve this in a restaurant. You'd get thrown out of town, not just the restaurant in a bid to win a coveted place in the semi-finals. It's difficult for me to believe that sort of work has come out of a chef so young. <laughs>